Okay, in today's video, we are going to do two things. We are going to calculate, first of all, the net work that is done on this object by these four forces. And then, based on the net work, we're going to calculate free of charge, no extra charge, bonus content, the change in velocity of the object after that work has been acted upon it. Now, you can see in this video, in this diagram, we have four forces. You should notice that the applied force of 40 newtons is not parallel to the displacement. It is at an angle of 38 degrees above the displacement, above the horizon, above the horizontal. 40 newtons applied force. Then we have a friction force acting in the opposite direction of 25 newtons, and we have a normal force, and we have a gravitational force. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate the net work that is done on the object by those four forces. And to do that, we're going to have to use the work equation FD, force times distance times the cosine of theta. Now, it's important to remember what is theta. Theta is the angle between the displacement and the force. All right, it's just the angle between those two. Now, for the applied force, the force is 40 newtons. The distance the object moves is 15 meters. And the angle between the displacement and the force, theta, is 38 degrees. So it's just the cosine of 38 degrees. I just want to point out, when we multiply these two times the cosine of 38 degrees, what we're getting from that is the component of the force that is parallel to the displacement. Sometimes I like to think of it as the force times the cosine of theta times the distance. Now these are all multiplications, so there's no uh, order of operations here. It doesn't matter what order we multiply these in. Usually the equation is written Fd cosine theta, but when we multiply this times the cosine of theta, we're getting the component of the force that's parallel to the displacement because that is the definition of work. It's the displacement, the magnitude of the displacement, the distance, times the component of the force that's parallel to the displacement. Okay, so that's why we multiply times the cosine of 38. And if you do that, you get that the applied force does plus work, positive work, force in the direction of the motion, 472 joules. Now, by now, we should know that the gravitational force and the normal force do no work because they are 90 degrees to the displacement and the cosine of 90 is zero. So the gravitational force does no work. Same thing with the normal force. The normal force is at 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 is zero, so the normal force does no work. It's not that those forces don't exist. It's just that forces at 90 degrees to displacement do no work on the object because the cosine of 90, as you should remember, is zero. Now, what about the friction force? The friction force acts opposite the direction of motion, and therefore the angle between the displacement and the friction force, which is theta, is 180. So the force is 25 the distance is 15, the cosine of 180, and the cosine of 180, as you should remember, is negative one. And that means that the friction force does minus 375 joules of work on the object. The applied force puts, no, puts energy in. The gravitational force, the normal force, do no work. The friction force takes energy out. And therefore, the net work done on the object is 97 joules of work. This is the net work. We just add all those up. We get the net work. Now, we can use the net work to determine the change in velocity. Now, to get the change in velocity, we're going to need the mass. And we want to know if the object starts at rest, which means the initial velocity is zero, what will the final velocity be? Now, to do that, we're going to use the work energy theorem, which says that the net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, the change in kinetic energy is final minus the initial. The initial we said is zero, so it has no kinetic energy initially. That just means, therefore, that the net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is just going to be the final kinetic energy. And from the final kinetic energy, we can get the final velocity. Remember, the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And I put f here for final velocity. Now, we want to get the final velocity, which means we need to solve this equation for the final velocity. The final velocity is 2 times the work divided by the mass. To solve for the velocity, we have to multiply both sides of this equation by 2. You get 2w, 2 times the work. Then we divide by the mass. You get 2w divided by the mass. Then you get the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides. You get v final, which means that v final is 
2 times 97, that's the amount of work that's done, the net work divided by the mass, 5.5 kilometers, 5.5 kilometers, 5.5 kilograms, and you take the square root of that, you get that the final velocity of the object is 5.94 meters per second. Okay? So there you go. We found the net work. Then we used the net work using the work energy theorem, the work energy principle, to find the change in velocity of the object. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please give me a nice comment, positive comment, or thumbs up in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful, and we will see you in the next video.